everybody, I'm Adriana and welcome back to my channel. Um, today I am filming a second trimester recap, although I am very, very, very deep into my third trimester currently. Um, I am today 37 weeks and four days. 37 weeks and four days I think um so yes very deep into my third trimester but uh just haven't gotten around to film my second trimester recap and I wanted to do that before baby was here and then I did not care anymore <laughs> um so that's what we're doing today I would normally put on makeup for something like this but we are just at that point where I just don't really care anymore so this is what I look like um for our video today um we did change our room up quite a bit look at our princess julie june sitting right here looking like a model she's sleeping i don't even think you can tell she's sleeping but her eyelids are closed um but um okay so i basically what i've been doing is throughout my entire pregnancy um i have been writing down notes in my journal and what i have done is i just kind of consolidated all of the notes from my second trimester and kind of rewrote them um, so that I can kind of take you on a chronological, um, just kind of recap of what my second trimester has been like. I'm going to read through my notes and then elaborate if anything comes to mind. Um, also, can we also just notice how when I filmed my first trimester recap, which I filmed when I had just entered my second trimester, um, my hair was much shorter than it is now. So it is true that the, you know, the pregnancy hair is a real thing. Um, I would say it's probably just as thick as it normally is but it did it did indeed grow um and if you're wondering why I'm like moving around so much I'm currently sitting on my birth ball um I kind of live on this thing now whenever I work um just because I'm trying to get this baby out of me so anything to help him right so if I'm like bouncing <laughs> that is what's happening um but yes so let's go ahead and get started okay so my second trimester um started at 13 weeks um, by that point, I already knew the gender for baby um, and um, already gotten like that blood work done. Um, I'm trying to think, but I'll, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. My notes, I have like what my early symptoms were um, in my second trimester, um, how they differed from my first trimester. And then we get into like my my recap really starts at like 17 and a half weeks so a little bit into my second trimester but okay so my first early symptoms in my second trimester were increased discharge um feet soreness began again um i was far less smelly if you remember my first trimester recap one of the early symptoms that i discovered was i just felt like i had really bad bo um and i'm very grateful that in my second trimester that went away so that is done. Um, we're done with smelling terrible. Um, I definitely wear deodorant a lot more often now. I am an avid native user. <laughs> um, I don't think it is, that is not a recommendation though because I definitely don't think it's the best for long wear. Um, but just for like covering up slight stink, that's what I use it for. So <laughs> um, I'm far less smelly. Um, nausea has gone away at that point. Um, and then I started waking up about one time a night to pee, which I know is like very minimal compared to many people's experience. Um, but for me, I like never woke up at night to pee um, in my normal life. So that was new for me. Um, and then before, um, all right, so wait, before I bump the feel baby with hand on her, oh, okay, yes. So before my bump fully like arrived, <laughs> um, I was able to feel with my hand, my midwife showed me how to feel around with my hand on my pelvic area where my baby was. Um, and it was like a hard little spot, so that was really cool. Um, and that was something I was able to do um, early in my second trimester. That didn't last too long though because then once the bump started and baby started growing bigger, it became a little bit, well, it became very obvious where he was because then he was getting bigger, but um, the way I felt him was kind of different. So. There's that, and then um, this is a fun one. My nipples definitely started to get large and dark. 
very dark in color um, and so that is one of the symptoms that I experienced um, and then same with my armpits like the pigmentation in my armpits started to get darker so those are a couple of things that I experienced at the beginning of my second trimester I will say that the exhaustion started to slow down I was not as tired as my first trimester um, now in my third trimester uh, when we get to that recap video, we'll talk about how that has changed. Um, for my second trimester, that is about it there. Um, and then, sorry, if you feel like I'm like breathing, it's because I literally cannot breathe. So <laughs> that's, that's how I feel right now. Next. So notes from 17 and a half weeks. Um, his heartbeat was 160 beats per minute. Um, at that point, that was kind of high, um, for a boy. Don't know why it was that high. Typically the other times, almost every other time I've gone, he's been in the 140s, um, including like even up to now. So because that was a little bit higher, my midwife was like, you're having a boy, right? Like, She's like, you're not having a girl um, because I guess a girl's heart rates tend to run a little bit higher. Um, and so her saying that started to make me doubt <laughs> our, our uh, gender um, tests. So we did sneak peek. Um, sneak peek can be really successful or really unsuccessful depending on how you take it. Oftentimes if you do the at home test, a lot of people tend to screw it up um, in some way um, because literally all it takes is some sort of contact with male DNA to basically hijack the results and give you a false reading. Um, but that was not the case for us because we had blood drawn um, by my midwife in her office. Um, it was you know very sanitary like run-of-the-mill blood draw situation so i wasn't really concerned about an inaccurate reading at all until she had said that so um that that made me be like mm, is that true um but um anyways basically when we went for my anatomy scan we did confirm that he is a boy so all that all was correct i don't know why he had a little bit of a heart a higher heart rate that day um but he's been perfectly normal ever since um all prior appointments she surveyed my pelvic region um to kind of feel around for baby um but this time she went straight for right below my belly button and that was really wild to me that my uterus was that high already because previously it was not um so it was really wild to like hear that that's how high my uterus was and like he's floating around up there um and then at that point I was 156 pounds um and I had yet to gain any weight she asked if I was doing okay and said that as long as I gained at least 14 pounds by the end of the pregnancy then we're good um I kind of did the opposite thing at the beginning and even though I wasn't throwing up because I know it's very normal for moms to lose weight at the beginning of their pregnancy because of how much they're throwing up um that wasn't really the case for me it's just my body just was losing weight don't know why um and so it wasn't a problem it was just something that like we we're like hmm she just wanted to make sure that like there was not a reason that was happening um and no my body just was just kind of going backwards before it went forwards um and so yeah now so like at that point I was 156 right now I'm at about 176 so I've gained about 20 pounds um in this pregnancy and I am almost done so um that's kind of a wrap so we're in the clear um but that was just one of those things that she made a note of so I want to share that um August 1st um so moving down a little bit at this point um I had felt baby for the first time at 19 weeks in a couple days um I can't remember exactly how many days past 19 weeks I was but that is when I felt baby for the first time um to me now a lot of people describe to me that when they felt their baby for the first time moving it felt like butterflies that never made sense to me like I I've never really understood the concept of butterflies you know what I mean when people describe that um so because I don't totally understand like what that is supposed to feel like the best way that I would describe what it felt like is a light rolling feeling um kind of as if, kind of as if I was like a human massage chair um, um is the best way to put it so like imagine like the fabric on a massage chair and then you just have like those balls rolling underneath that is kind of what that felt like which is very light so 
um that was on august 1st was the first time that i had felt that at that point it was just something that i could feel robert was not able to feel it externally and i also could not feel it externally like with my hand um just internally now august 9th i was about 20 weeks and i felt more prominent movement um like light pulses and rolling primarily at night was the time that i felt this the most it's it felt like as if every time i laid down to basically just like chill for the night go to bed that's when i would feel that the most um and i wrote down here little bump like i felt like i could i could start seeing a little bump even though now at the size that i'm at now um i look back at previous bump photos and i'm like lol what do you mean you thought that you had a bump <laughs> um okay and then August 15th was when we had our anatomy scan. This was really, really cool. Um, we feel really blessed with the ultrasound company that my midwife recommended us to go to. Um, and our ultrasound was included in the cost of our midwife, which I don't know if I went over really much of like cost or anything like that um, in my first trimester recap. But so we self pay for my midwife and then um, she sends us an invoice and then once baby is here we send that invoice to my insurance company who will then reimburse a percentage of that cost. So that's kind of how we're going about it there. Um, now I that is only possible for us right now because even though we are self-employed I am still 25 um, so because I'm not yet 26 um, my mom's health insurance has not yet kicked me off so I am still under that health insurance now when I turn 26 we're probably gonna go with um, Christian Healthcare Ministries which is more of like a health care sharing like program um and at that point we would pay out of pocket um for April my midwife um and then um the health care sharing will like share a percentage of the home birth so that's a little bit about that at the anatomy scan basically what we felt really lucky or just really best with was that my sonographer was very verbal um she really talked us through everything that we saw um so pretty much um like she just talked us through it all like even though she was like measuring different body parts and things like that she was very vocal on saying like this is this body part this is that body part like this is normal um this is what i'm looking for here like especially we got really cool pictures of like his spine and like his vertebrae and she showed us that she like counted each one of the vertebrae making sure it had everything and that his tailbone tapered off at the end um so things like that were really cool um one of the things that she noted was that she said he had a really big foot. Um, it's just foot one, just because that's what we were looking at. He does have two feet. Um, that was a question I think one of his grandmas asked and I'm like, yes, he has two feet. It's just, you know, we were just talking about one. Um, so that was really funny that she mentioned that. Um, but let me read my notes here. It was so surreal, it was about 45 minutes long. Um, so just a heads up to any moms there that it is a long appointment, but honestly, like, I don't even care. Like, I could have sat there forever. I'm like, show me my baby for hours for all I care. Um, it was so surreal. I had to go with a full bladder. Um, and then my mom, my brother, and Robert went with me, my husband. Um, they measured every single body part of his, absolutely every single one, and confirmed that he is in fact a boy. Um, and then they mentioned the big feet, um, that his femurs were long. Um, so she anticipates him to be tall um, and that he had a pretty big head. So love that for me. Um, and then at this appointment, we also saw that I had a low-lying placenta. Um, so basically what that means is my placenta was stationed at a certain distance away from my cervix that was just a little too close for comfort. And so basically that required me to then go in later in my pregnancy to make sure that my placenta had moved. Um, now, just for some background there, your placenta doesn't actually move uh, on its own. Um, the way that it was described to me by my midwife and the sonographer, who birth both were not really concerned about this with where my placenta was like it was worth checking and coming back to the confirm uh, but they weren't really concerned about it so basically your uterus is like a balloon and if you put a dot on a balloon um the dot itself is not going to move but as the balloon grows that dot is going to move up with the balloon as the balloon grows and so imagine that dot is your placenta and as my uterus grew throughout the remainder of my pregnancy my placenta 
kind of like moved with my uterus up and out of the way of my cervix. Um, it was not covering my cervix at that point, but they needed to make sure that it was not too close that it would either block his head from exiting um, or cover my cervix. And thankfully when we went back, um, we went back later into my or not later, but we went back later when I was already in my third trimester to confirm again, um, and it had indeed moved up and out of the way, and so we are perfectly clear to continue with vaginal birth as planned, um, but had it been covering my cervix, that would have been a problem that would have required a C-section. So that was one of our really big prayers following this appointment, um, and thankfully that is something we don't have to worry about, but just a little fun fact, because I had no idea anything about that going into this appointment. Um, and so that was our anatomy scan and I'll put in some like little clips and pictures and stuff of that experience here. Thank you very much. You're welcome. There it is. Look at this baby. Hello. Is that the front of his face? Yep. I see his eyes, right? Yeah, I see you. You looking at me? Why are you looking at me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. You see it? Yeah, Ooh. I see it. So Whoa. I'll give you a little anatomy class here. This is the baby's head. Yeah. You can see the orbits right here. You can see the nose. Oh, look at him. He's like, excuse he's me. High. He's looking at <laughs> We'll say he's waving rather he's than waving. trying to get No flash photographer. Here we go. This is the belly. Look at, little... look at the little arms. And over here is the umbilical cord. You can see it. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can see his heart beating right here. Mm -hmm. And... We'll wow, really yeah. quick again. Okay. What are those little black specks on his, like near his belly? Well, he's got, um, yes, there. he's got a gallbladder, he's got um, intestines forming, there's all kinds of stuff gotcha. going on in the liver, so, and <laughs> kidneys and all kinds of stuff. So now you can see his little ribs right here. Then you can see all the way his lumbar spine. You can actually see his bladder. Look at it. Oh, it's full. Wow. He needs to go and pee. Look. <laughs> that makes two of us, buddy. That makes two of us. And now you can see his femur bone, right? Yeah. And also his big, long legs and big foot. Oh, yeah. His feet. Oh, Look at the foot right here. Oh, the foot? Yeah. And also you can see that he's laying on his placenta like a nice temper Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, take advantage. Use what you got. <laughs> yeah, use it, use it. He's innovative. Yeah, that's why he's on his side. Look at him. He's a side sleeper. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and the black uh, stuff around it is the amniotic fluid. So that's the reason why we always encourage mom to always hydrate. Because mm -hmm. um, uh, fluid makes him, you know, move. Okay. Well, it is good for them because that keeps the temperature actually in, you know, stable. Um, and um, it gives them mobility. They drink the amniotic fluid. So the, when they urinate, it's recycled pee. Mm -hmm. And it goes mm -hmm. around and around. And, um, and the best thing is, you know, to keep their body temperature regulated, okay. you know. Um, let's see what else. And there you go. And there's your monster bladder. <laughs> <laughs> All right, does he have a name? No, not yet. Okay, well, he, you still have time. Yeah. So, there we go. You want to say bye to mommy and daddy? Oh, okay. And I guess uncles, uh, uncles and grandma. And grandma. There you go. <laughs> say bye. Oh, oh he's he so cute. He's like, I can't really tell. Oh, he's, he's moving. He's moving. Oh, he's talking now. Oh, oh. All right. He's like, feed me. I'm hungry. Me too, buddy. <laughs> When's <laughs> breakfast? There you go. Cinnamon toast. Aw, look at him. He's such a kid. All right, guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Go for it. Yep. Yeah. Well, we see right, it right here. There we go. We just do the other one so the mom's and the parents can hear it. 144 beats per minute. Uh, 
Oh, it's a little lower than it was last time. Well, as they grow, yeah, it's the, gonna slow down. It normalizes, slow down. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you're good. Um, because it was truly like, I, I was so looking forward to that appointment. So looking forward to it. Um, and it was like everything I had hoped for. It was super cool. And then August 23rd, I was 21 weeks and five days. Um, I had written down a couple extra um, symptoms that I had been experiencing. Um, one of them being sore gums, um, like my, my mouth gums. Um, those were just felt like extra sore. Um, I needed to change my underwear more often, having to deal with the um, increased discharge. I felt like I needed more sleep, um, probably from waking up in the middle of the night to pee. Um, I was starting to be able to see movement externally. Um, and Julie, Miss Julie, started to get in her bed um, every night. Now, Julie does not sleep in bed with us. Um, she just kind of knows, like, she kind of picks up the vibes and when we, like, turn off the lights and are getting ready to go to bed, she goes to her own bed. But at some point in my second trimester, she decided that in the middle of the night, she is allowed to jump into her bed and sleep with us for the remainder of the night. And I don't know why she started that. I don't know if that's a pregnancy thing. I don't know if she just woke up one day and decided she's going to do that. Um, she's been doing it ever since. Um, so that, that happened. Um, some other second trimester happenings. Okay, yes, I think I mentioned this in my first trimester video that um, me and my midwife, we went through all of those risks together um, and what risks I may have been um, prone to or not prone to, um, different things we would face and things like that. So one of them um, that we would check for is we would check for a UTI. So whenever I go to um, my midwife, I always pee in a cup. That's just like part of the run of the mail. She always runs a couple tests with my urine. Um, and then she's drawn my blood a good couple of times just to make sure that things like my hemoglobin are in check, that my blood sugar is in check. Um, she's run, we've done like full lab reports. Um, my glucose test is a whole story um, that we'll talk about in my third trimester recap video um, that we had to do. Um, always check my blood pressure, my vitals, things like that. But one of the things that in my second trimester specifically um, that I got, um, which lots of women get, is a UTI. Um, it's just because your immune system is low. It tends to happen to lots of women that you get a UTI when you're pregnant. Um, now mine though was an asymptomatic UTI, meaning that I did not feel any pain. I didn't feel like I had a UTI, which praise the Lord, because I know UTIs are very painful. Um, but at the same time, it made it kind of difficult because I didn't actually know if I was fighting off this UTI because I didn't even know I had it to begin with. So thankfully my midwife had checked and she was like, Hey, do you know you have a UTI? And I'm like, no. No, I did not know I have a UTI and so basically we did a couple things um, basically I stopped wearing um, underwear slash tight pants something I've done a lot in this pregnancy is wear biker shorts um, I've just bought like extra large biker shorts and they have lasted me throughout this entire pregnancy it's been my favorite thing to wear um, but at this point when I was fighting off this UTI I stopped wearing underwear and I stopped wearing tight pants um, and then I also started taking D-Manos and like cranberry pills which are a um, pregnancy safe more natural alternative to antibiotics to fight off a UTI and so I took those I can put in a picture of what they look like here um, and that's what my midwife recommended that I took take I took those for like a week to two weeks and then I did fight off that UTI um, had I not fought off that UTI then I would have had to go on antibiotics which is not ideal in pregnancy um, so I'm really happy that I didn't have to do that but had I had to like it's not the end of the world um, but that is something that I had was an asymptomatic UTI. So that is a test that we run and she took care of that for me. So you see, you take lots of tests um, depending on who your midwife is and things like that. Um, to make sure that things are extra super safe um, and there are risks with having an untreated UTI. I am not 100% up to snuff on what all of those risks are but um, there are risks for like things like preterm labor and risks to the baby and, and to you if you do not treat that UTI so it's really important that um, it went away. So that was that. Um, Oh, again, like nothing else would take it away other than like the cranberry de menace pills either. Like I tried drinking all the water and, you know, all the things before taking the pills. It just wouldn't work. So 
also in my second trimester, I started therapy. Um, not like physical therapy or anything like that, no, like mental health care therapy. Um, and honestly, I highly recommend it to anybody who is about to bring a child into the world um, because it is so wonderful to talk to someone who is outside of yourself, outside of your family and your life and your situations um, to kind of talk through different things like what parenting style you want to have, um, maybe the ways that you grew up, maybe traumas that you haven't quite um, talked through or recognized or even realized that you have any sort of trauma, um, things like that, or just like expectations that you may have for yourself, for your child, for your spouse that you have not actually realized you have. Um, and so we talked a lot about parenting expectations, releasing control, managing anxiety surrounding unknowns, um, work-life balance, <laughs> um, and then feelings of loneliness, comparison, feelings of unworthiness and embarrassment and friendships and things like that. Um, and so that's kind of a little bit about what I talked about um, in my experience in therapy. Um, I. I think my last appointment was like a month ago. I was doing it two times a month and then I switched to one time a month. And now I've kind of like paused um, and I will probably pick it back up postpartum. Um, but yeah, it's been really, it's been really great to, to be able to just kind of like walk through a lot of those things. And it was honestly really helpful in helping me understand where my gender disappointment came from, which we talked about in my first trimester. Now I'm just like so excited for my baby. like. I'm just excited for the human that he's gonna be. But kind of talking through therapy kind of helped me like f figure out where that disappointment was even coming from and the preconceived notions and expectations that I was placing on this imaginary girl child um, that were not right, you know what I mean? Like kind of trying to um, fulfill my own dreams through this child that had not yet existed or anything like that. So it's just like, something that I'm actually really glad happened because now I was like able to reflect on that and then if we do have a girl in the future which I would love to have a girl at some point but now I'm just kind of like if it happens great and if it doesn't like that's okay too um but I don't know sometimes I'm just kind of glad it happened that way that I was able to recognize what I was doing in my brain before I got to that point um so yeah that was really cool um at this point also is when I kind of started to feel um some funky feelings of you know um for example like we are living with family at the moment we cannot quite afford to get into the housing market in the way that it currently is and so like a lot of our friends and stuff like that do live in really nice neighborhoods and live near each other so they get to do things with each other and stuff like that um and i just i long for that so badly um and while i'm so grateful that we have community um I just wish that it could be like that for me and so um, there's like feelings like that like you know it's like we are fully adults we like own our own business and we manage our finances well and we're very blessed but also at the same time it's amazing how like lacking in one thing like a house and like living with family can just make it feel kind of like embarrassing sometimes like you're pregnant living with your husband in your family's house and so that was something that I kind of had to work walk through and that's something that I share simply because I know that I am not the only person in that situation um a lot of us cannot afford houses right now um and you know we all make different decisions in life and stuff like that um and so I just I know I'm not the only one like that and thankfully working in the wedding industry and having lots of other friends who are photographers or like self-employed and business owners and things like that I know that we are not alone in that situation and so that's been really nice to be able to find some like comfort in other people who are like nope I'm living the family with my child and my husband because that's just what's possible right now but most of the things I talked about in therapy um and then kind of also those feelings of like um you know once baby gets here kind of navigating friendships not wanting to be left out and things like that um but also the inevitability of like you know out of sight out of mind kind of a thing um and just accepting that like what will happen will happen and sometimes you know like friendships are for a season and you know things like that so i've never been one that's the most comfortable with that concept of like some friendships are for a season some are for life kind of a thing but it's just one of those things that you just have to 
you just have to deal with um and that is okay and you know the lord will surround us with our people um in our time and again i'm super grateful for the community that we've had but also like there's just so many of those feelings that you just you find yourself with especially in pregnancy of like unworthiness and like embarrassment of feeling like you're not exactly like at the place that you would like to be even though the people around you are in and like things like that lots of comparison and lies that are from the enemy um and so just trying to deal with those in therapy and my therapist was also a christian um so that was really great too that we could be on the same page with that so that's my little piece on therapy and my second trimester um and then in my second trimester also was the start of our wedding season we had a very busy wedding season this fall in a very short amount of time so basically august through october was like the height of our wedding season um and that started my second trimester i held up really really well um my body was able to just kick it into high gear um now towards the end i did start to experience a lot of back pain um like lower back pain since then i recently started um going to a chiropractor in my third trimester um which has been really great um i always thought that would be a scary experience to get like the neck thing done but uh man do i love it and like crack me up so um but yeah my lower back started to hurt towards the end of wedding season and then foot pain as well but for the most part i was able to really do a lot um like i it didn't really slow me down at all um and i was really really grateful because we had a lot of weddings and we had some weddings that like some disney weddings that started at like we would call time was like four o'clock in the morning um so yeah we got to do a lot of really cool things really excited to share about that um but i'm just really grateful that my body was able to hold up and just grateful to the lord for that um so Oh, I do have more actually. Okay. And then I have a couple extra dates. September 9th, 2023. Um, Robert felt him for the first time. Feeling him right now on my fingertips. What the heck? Really? Oh yeah, you might I be. I think you are. Oh my. Because <laughs> I felt Hello? it. Give it a little press. Maybe he'll kick again. You can press a little harder than that. I just don't want to hurt him. Yeah. I think he's going to kick again. Kick, kick your father. Um, and I do have clips of that and then um, we switched to a bigger room in this house to share with baby um, and that is something too um, which is another thing that you know is a bummer but it's you know it's life um, of course you know when you imagine like you like grow up and you get married and you have a baby like you imagine like having this nursery that you can decorate and things like that um, and I think for a lot of my pregnancy I really a lot of my distraught and emotional outbursts were just kind of mourning what I thought this experience would look like um just because we went from like being like super independent by like living on our own in our apartment to making the decision to move out of our apartment to save money to exist in this competitive housing market and then we found out that we got pregnant which we're so grateful for um but just kind of mourning what i thought this experience would look like um and one of those things was having a nursery um and being able to decorate that and things like that and um so we kind of came to peace that that was not going to happen which is okay because let's be honest um most babies sleep in the same room as their parents anyways for the first couple months of life whether it's in a bassinet or a crib um we personally have decided not to bed share um i know people have a lot of different opinions on that totally up to you and how you feel about that but for me that was not something that brought me peace um but we do have his crib in this room um and we have his things and we've kind of organized it to kind of serve everyone um so i think at some point maybe i'll do like a little room tour um and then show you guys kind of how we've set it up to kind of share space with baby um we are not planning on being here for super long um so 
we'll see. We'll see what 2024 has in store. That's all I can say. Um, but we did switch to a bigger room to share with baby. And I did paint this entire room by myself in my second trimester. <laughs> um, I did open the windows and doors and all of that so that I wasn't like inhaling fumes and I wore a mask. Um, but I did paint this whole room all by myself, I would just like to say. Um, so yes, did that. And then September 15th, 2023, oh, we took our baby moon. Um, which was actually like a very last minute decision. Um, we had like a quickie break between weddings um, and I think we had like just finished editing one. So it was like before we were gonna start editing our next one, but also like a break between actually physically having to be at them. Um, and I had just, just, just turned 25 weeks. So we're like, let's quickly squeeze the baby moon in here. So we went on a Disney cruise. Um, we went on the Disney wish um, and it was really cool. What was really sweet is we've gotten to know a good bit of the cast on the cruise ship um just because we've done weddings on the disney wish and so it was kind of cool because when they saw us again and we told them that we were expecting like they like had surprise gifts in our room and all of that which like literally could have made us cry it was so so sweet um but yeah so that was really fun um and yeah, that was pretty much my second trimester. I really can't think of too, too much else. Um, that's my recap. My third trimester, I did a lot better of a job um, recapping all of the things. I will say um, another thing about my second trimester, which has kind of been my pregnancy in general, is I love breakfast. Like I normally don't care about breakfast. In pregnancy, I love breakfast. Um, and yeah, also at that point in my second trimester, um, I slept on my stomach for a long time and it wasn't until about halfway through my second trimester that I decided I could no longer sleep on my stomach comfortably um, and then I started sleeping on my back and sides and then once I really started to get a bump that is when I kind of stopped sleeping on my back or my stomach in general um, I did try here's another thing I tried all the pregnancy pillows I tried the big pregnancy pillow that like looks like a snake I tried a body pillow I tried all the things um, and I did not like them they made me really really hot um, that's one thing is I get really hot at night now um, and so I really did not like the feeling of being like surrounded in pillows um, so that was not comfortable to me. So I got pregnancy pillows and then I got rid of them. Um, so now what I have been doing is I've been sleeping with a pillow between my legs, um, which my chiropractor says is actually really great um, because then instead of that top leg kind of like falling down onto the other one and kind of like misaligning your hips, um, it kind of keeps things leveled and in proper posture while I'm sleeping. Um, so that's been helpful is having something in between my legs. Um, I also sleep with really, really, really light blankets now. Um, but yes, pregnancy pillows were not for me. Unfortunately, I did not like them. But yeah, okay, so that is pretty much everything for my second trimester that I can remember. Um, my third trimester recap will be much more in detail and that will probably come sometime after baby is born. Honestly, maybe even after the birth vlog. At this point, I am expecting to film a birth vlog, probably something very graphic. <laughs> um, so if you're into that, I guess stick around for that. Um, I personally love watching the really authentic birth videos um where people really take you through the process like i i literally i'm pretty sure i watch one a day um i just think they're fascinating and i feel like it's really helped and kind of just helped in desensitizing you to the birth experience seeing different things that happen um so I've loved it and I would love to share one like that, but also we'll see how I feel on in real time and if this camera even gets picked up. I'd also just like to have that for me too. So we'll see, we'll see what happens, but I will share with you a little bump date, which I recognize this is not indicative at all of my second trimester, but just, I told you guys what day is today. Today is December 12th. Um, oh, actually um, at my anatomy scan, was it the first one? 
All right, so at my anatomy scan, they confirmed my original due date, which is December 29th. Now, when I went back for my anatomy scan in my third trimester, which we'll talk about later, they actually gave me a sooner due date of December 22nd. Now, it is kind of rule of thumb to just kind of take with a grain of salt um, the due dates that they give you when you go in for a scan, um, just because babies grow at different rates. Um, and so it's not the most accurate thing in the world. So my midwife is very much so sticking with the 29th as my due date, um, but I'm really hoping that the 22nd is correct. Um, we shall see. Um, my next appointment with my midwife is next Thursday. I had one yesterday, uh, but next Thursday the 21st is my next appointment with her. Um, so we'll see if I make it that far. If I didn't, I'd be totally cool with that. If I go into labor that day or the day after. I'm totally cool with that too. I'd really love to not make it to 20, um, to the 29th though. I just would love to have him a little bit sooner. But here is our bump date. Oof. Okay. So here, like, this is what we're working with right now. So that's, that's what we got. We got a whole baby in there. But yes thank you guys so much for watching hope you enjoy these recap videos if you have any questions about me my pregnancy um kind of want to hear about my experience in any sort of way or questions anything like that comment down below i would love to answer but otherwise i will see you next time with probably a birth vlog so see you then